classified by the authority of the SCP Foundation Overseer Council. This document and all associated documents are the property of the SCP Foundation and are subject to the classification requirements and restrictions therein. This document may or may not contain lethal mimetic defense measures. Attempting to access or disseminate this document without proper and sufficient authorization is punishable by death. Item number SCP-7444, Security Level 5, Containment Class, Pending. Special Containment Procedures. The Foundation currently has insufficient knowledge to prevent the effects of SCP-7444 and thereby return the universe to its non-anomalous state. Attempts to establish or find a new regulator are ongoing as of April 19th, 2022. Failure to do so will result in the possibility of a ZK-class reality failure scenario. Should it become apparent that SCP-7444 cannot be mitigated adequately, the Foundation should immediately begin preparing for a broken veil incident. In such an event, the secrecy of the Foundation need not be maintained. All resources necessary should be used to somehow avert the ZK-class scenario or Operation Lifeboat is to be initiated. Description SCP-7444 refers to a sudden anomalous phenomenon that is believed to have begun on April 19th, 2022, where an all universal scientific laws began deteriorating in their absoluteness. At the time of writing, all previously determined scientific laws have failed to adequately describe universal phenomena in 2.76% of scenarios. This percentage is not just be rising at an alarming rate. Following an investigation, it was determined that SCP-7444's occurrence was due to the absence of a regulator a necessary component to carry out the appropriate tasks needed to make a universe in functioning absolute order. In the current rate of deterioration, the civilian population is likely to notice the effects of the phenomenon by May of 2022. Addendum 7444-1 Investigation Record 19th of April 2022 Four hours after SCP-7444's effects were first noticed by the Foundation, Two experienced agents and a liaison from the Department of Universal Affairs, DUI, were assigned and ready to investigate the cause of the phenomena at location of interest Alpha. Their intended mission brief was to identify SCP-7444 and possibly negotiate its stabilization. Begin log. Mic check. Equipped and ready. Check. Yes, check. All right, we're going to take one last look. Two operators assist the three agents, readjusting several components of their spatial tethering harness suits and reconfirming that they were fully sealed and operable. All good, get in the pod. Aye. The three enter single file and board the spatial penetration vehicle pod. Shocks, the last person to get in sits up front and closes the pod's canopy. Sealing protocols activate. All systems agree. Boosters powering up. Launch sequence initiated. Strap yourselves in, fellas, and prepare for a ride. Jumping in. Three, two, one. Last off. All three agents cover their eyes as a bright white light, accompanied by neon streaks, shines through the canopy. The growing G-forces or those significantly reduced by their harnesses make this difficult, and they simply resort to closing their eyes tightly as they pressed heavily against their seats. Speeds increasing and closing in on the threshold, currently at 7 GV, 8 GV, 9 GV. Threshold reach, brace! A loud pop is heard. With the barrier broken, the pop begins slowing down, and the bright light is instantly replaced with a view of pans and subtle colors from the distance. All right, status. Schultz looks behind at everybody aboard the pod. They nod. We're good. Great. 
you're on a nominal trajectory for LOI Alpha. We aren't seeing any complications ahead of you at the moment. We're going to reactivate the boosters and brace once more. Three, two, one. The part significantly accelerates, speeding through a space towards its target destination. Note that comms may go down any moment at this point. Proceed as instru- <laughs> Well, what do you know? All right then, I'm going to take the flight controls. Ben? Yep, void mapping. We're good. Sending the coordinates to your terminal. It's going to be a smooth ride. So, Bailey. Yes, you good? I heard it's the first time on missions like this. Well, I guess this is definitely new to me, especially a mission like this, you know. Totally, I'm getting you. Well, I was the only person available on such short notice. It's not like they could wait around for someone else, especially for this. So yeah, I guess I'm in for one experience this trip. Well, rest assured, you could say we're a bit new to this too. Well, not exactly. Just that we haven't made much rounds there anyway. I just suppose it speaks to how big of a deal this place is. Level 5 classified and all that. We've done this a bunch of times, yes. But honestly, not that much. Ha! Huh. Well, I guess. <sighs> Come on now, you don't have to talk like that. You might be on your way to a promotion after this. This mission's just giving you a boost up. <laughs> ah, that's, that's if it all goes as planned. Oh, don't be pessimistic. We want this to succeed as much as you do. Just go with the flow. It sure can't be too bad. You've done this before, right? Well, not too much in universal tongue. Oh, so that's why you're nervous. Well, yeah. Come on, talk to me. I'd say I'm kind of fluent. Oh, um, okay, um, we come in peace? Simple but perfect. But, uh, what about a more complicated sentence? Like, anything, really. Uh, we would like to negotiate our planned safety against several unidentified extraterrestrial threats beneath their way towards our solar system. Now that's a mouthful, don't you think? <laughs> well, we would like to negotiate this planet's spark from a few threats from space making their way towards the solar system. Safety. You messed up a pronunciation a bit. Oh, what you said meant spark, so you got to keep that in mind. Even a small error could change a word's meaning a lot. Ah, well, let's have I don't watch this up then. Oh no, you're definitely better than the average fella. Don't be discouraged. You're good. Ha, huh, thank you. No prob. Mm-hmm. Ben? Oh yeah, yep. Uh, no change in course is needed. We'll be there in, uh, well, about right now. The thrusters power down as the part begins drifting at a steady speed towards a massive structure ahead. The structure itself appears to be a wall stretching all the way across observable space and encompassing all sides, constructed from a metallic surface with an immediately apparent artificial design. A single opening in the wall emits a strong beam of light. The craft moves towards it. Whoa! End of the universe. Literally. Did they brief you onto this? No, no, they didn't. Well, actually, they did. But I didn't think it looked like this. The part moves towards the opening and enters it before activating landing protocols. The part is successfully docked and the canopy is opened. All three exit the vehicle. Despite the black metallic appearance on the exterior of the wall, the interior is brightly lit and the floor, walls and ceiling are purely white with no blemish. My god, this place! Oh, it's gigantic. You haven't seen half the place. Well, neither have we. Shouts and Benjamin walk to the side of the pod and open a storage hatch. 
retrieving her pulse weapons and arming them. Well, let's not go up too much, Bailey. We still got a job to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. The two escort Escobar further into the structure at a steady pace. They're moving towards an entrance to a larger chamber located at the end of the room. So this regulator is here. Says it always was. That's all we know, really. It's big, not completely as big as this place, but still pretty big. I've been told it's usually very calm, uh, collected, easy to reason with. Would say so, it's never had that much of a temper, as far as I remember. Oh, that's good to hear. Uh, personality-wise, been told it likes flattery. Yeah, flattery. Oh man, it loves it. I mean, it took such a liking to the last guy that came here. And now they now got probability messing gimmicks. Nothing ever happens to him aside from promotions. I think they're pretty high up now on the ladder right now. Huh. It is how it is. Alright then. Here we are. You ready? Escobar takes a deep breath and looks up. She looks down and nods. Shouts nods back and pushes the door open. Inside the new chamber, all manner of old panels, terminals, Buns and other unknown contraptions and devices are visible. Exhaust pipes continuously release a viscous dark fluid which rises up into the room ceiling where vents actively collect the substance. Aside from the cluttered environment, in the center of the room is a luminescent golden liquid on the floor spilt, smeared and splattered across the floor. Beyond the puddle is a human figure, simply wearing a red and white striped shirt and pants, cutting a hole in the wall using what appears to be a pocket knife. They fold and place the knife in their back pocket and, grunting, pushing the wall aside and enlarging the breach. Schultz and Benjamin take a defensive position and train their weapons on the figure, while Escobar appears to be in a state of surprise and confusion seeing the figure. The figure notices, and with a look of alarm, hesitantly lifts his hands up. Identify yourself! Uh, hi. The figure nervously smiles and slightly waves at the three. I said identify yourself! Who are you? Are you human? I, uh, I mean, I don't want to call you by my name, but, uh, I'm human. So, who are you? The figure, now fully facing the three, visually appears to be a man of South Asian descent and is of slim build. The front of the clothes is wet with what appears to be the aforementioned liquid on the floor. The same substance is on the face as well, though wiped off. What are you doing here? How are you even here? You haven't even got a suit on. And more importantly, where's the regulator? Uh, the regulator? I don't know what you're talking about. Schultz hesitates for a moment and looks at Benjamin, who does the same to Schultz. It. It. Oh, it. Uh, yeah, um, are you by any chance uh, talking about him? The figure gestures towards the puddle on the floor. After a pause, an expression of shock appears on both agents' faces. The figure nervously chuckles. You! You're saying that you killed God? Well, I... I suppose so. Aren't you guys human too? How are you here? We're asking that from... Schultz looks towards Escobar. But why? What do you mean, why? Why did you kill God? Oh, uh, well, that's the only way I could get out of this place. This place? Yeah, here, this place, this universe. And you killed God to do it? Uh, yeah, but does that make you God? I don't know about that, actually. But you killed it, right? That puts you up on the top. And, well... We at least need you to take up its spot for the benefit of everyone, this entire universe even. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm not 
like quite into this god business. Real sorry, like I've watched him for a while doing his thing. I don't know something like paperwork. But yeah, I honestly can't say I feel like I'd enjoy it. Besides, I'd have my own thing to be doing. Ah, I see. Well, all right. That's okay, but could you at least tell me how you managed to do it? What do you mean? Ask about gestures towards the puddle. Oh, well, I just did something that came in mind, you know. Like, nothing that special. But, you know, I always figured that God would have tasted better. There was a moment of silence. The figure suddenly licks the lips. Well then, uh, got to go. No, wait! Shots fires at the figure. However, they duck, causing the projectile to pass over their head, hitting the wall next to the breach. The wall is partially deformed from the impact. The figure runs towards the breach and jumps out into transuniversal space. Escobar runs towards the hole and peers outwards. Crap! Enlog!